Very good morning to you, and here we are again with another wonderful show and tell. And this is something rather different. What's big and green and sitting on George's bench? <laughs> there are so many rude answers to that. But not this time. This time we have part of a piece of equipment which I'd like to show you. And I say part because this is only one part and some people, um, certainly quite a few of the ex-servicemen may well recognise what this is. Um, it's actually a rechargeable battery. Now I'm going to turn it over so that you can read what's written on that side. 24 volt, 4 amp hour, alkaline rechargeable battery. And um, yeah, it does have the Bardic Arrow on, which signifies it, it's ex-property of the MOD, the Ministry of Defence. And it comes as part of several radios. And I say radios because there's a whole series of radios. Um, it was known as the Klansman, and uh, it was widely used in the Falklands War. Um, first Iraq War. Um, but yes, this is a 24 volt secondary battery and it weighs about eight pounds. It's not light at all. It is a very heavy battery. Now this goes with, and I'm going to move that, I'm going to put that over on the side. That goes with this. I'm going to put that on the top as well. <laughs> this is the rest of the radio and this is more than just the radio I'll be honest um, because the standard battlefield radio didn't have this bit on the bottom. So let's take that away for now, undo the BNC connector, take that away and put that on the floor, dive down there and it also didn't have this top section on it. All you had connected was, apart from lots of broken bits of plastic, um, you had the radio connected like that. And some poor guy had to carry this on his back. <laughs> it's not light. Um, they're not bulletproof, but they're pretty close. Um, I have seen what these look like after being run over by a tank, and I've seen one survive that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so here we go. What have we got? Um, got the battery, we've got the radio, and this bit on the top is what's known as a turf, a tuner unit RF. And basically, if you've got half a dozen guys working on different frequencies, this is a tunable bandpass filter. And what you did, you tuned up your radio first, you then tuned up your bandpass filter by using the, uh, the switch dial on the top here. Yeah, you could uh, actually, you took that down, you push that and it would turn. You can't just twist it normally so that when you let go, it's locked in position. Um, you've got a handset which plugs in. You can actually plug in two handsets. So not only can you have your headset with your, your mic connector on it, but you can have your commander using the... Uh, the remote handset or he could have um, an extension speaker. The same radio was fitted to Land Rovers uh, for vehicle mounted use. They used to fit them in there with the turf and uh, mount them on the rack and uh, on the other side of the rack you'd have a couple of SLRs. Um, and yeah, it was uh, the mainstay of British Army for quite a number of years. 
Um, it covers, let's just turn it down, 30 megahertz, and I'll just show you the knobs in there. 30 megahertz, all the way up to where I normally use it. 70, uh, let me see what it goes up to. Seventy nine megahertz, maybe I can't remember its maximum tuning range, but um, I use this one for the four meter amateur band. I can also use it on the six meter amateur band, um, so I can use it on fifty megs or seventy megs. Um, and it comes with uh, a variety of accessories, um, which some of them I do have, some of them I don't have. Um, although I've got to admit, I've got a lot of the accessories that come with it. Um, I do have the 12 meter mast, the um, the 30 foot mast, um, which on its own with the the guy rope kit comes in at just over just over 60 kilos, about 125, 130 pounds. I've also got um, the flexible battle whip and a pair of these antennas, which basically just concertina into each other and. Uh, they make a, a fixed whip which then plugs in there and you screw it down tight and that's it you use it like that um, let's take that off again because it's very ungainly um, it comes with the optional uh, official rucksack which I do have um, and there are also battery chargers. There are rhombic antennas. I've got the rhombic antenna. Um, I've also got the ground-mounted spike antenna. I've got quite a lot of bits for this. I've also got the extension speaker and one of the switch boxes that for vehicle mounting so that you can go internal um, commander to driver or you know, front to back. Um, yeah, um, there are a lot of accessories and the bit I put on the floor. This bit here is a 20 watt linear amplifier. Um, well, it's a 20 watt amplifier. I wouldn't say it was linear because um, it's designed as a say for FM. So yeah, um, it's a it's another, you know, five pound brick. Um, certainly it's five, eight pounds. The design of these is absolutely brilliant because this fits on the same battery, like so, get it the right way around, put the notches in the hole. It's been a long time since I've played with this. I only dug it out of the cupboard today. I'm gonna clip that on the battery. I'm gonna turn that round with the uh, spring clips. And then the whole thing, which is out of shot of the overhead camera, but should be visible to the uh, one of these cameras at the side. Nope, maybe not. Um, oh, bang in the camera. Clips on like this. And there is the whole unit fully assembled. Um, what can I say about it apart from the fact that it works? It's very, very, very rugged. Um, the cable is now getting brittle. Um, you know, this is. 1970s cable and I do have some spares of these um, they're still available on eBay um, you can buy them some people charge the earth other people charge realistic money um, this particular one um, has got uh, as well as the front panel which I actually replaced this front panel for a new one I found a, a new one in stores that um, went straight on the front of this um, is also able to be used remotely 
down um, a three mile cable by plugging in to these two terminals on the top here. And here, uh, where is it? There, is actually a wire stripper to strip the telephone line before you plugged it in here. And this is the switch that you use to switch it from local to remote use, from unit to unit. You can actually set these up as repeaters if you've got a pair of them. Um, very, very, very versatile piece of kit. Uh, the model number is the PRC351. Um, when you've got a full kit like this, it's classed as a 352. Um, and as I say, it it's normally about um, five watts out of the, the standard unit. Um, with that, you've got 20... 20 watts minimum, they say, um, but realistically it's nearer 30 uh, with a fresh battery. Um, and, and yeah, you know, it's, it's a very, very nice piece of kit to still use on the amateur bands. Um, go through some of these labels, the on-off switch, off, whisper, loud and noise on. Um, off, straightforward, whisper actually increases the mic gain of the handset and that allows you to be very very quiet at night and talk in a whisper down the radio set so that the enemy don't hear you. Um, you can sit there and you can go very very quiet like that and it will sound as if you're shouting into the microphone. It really is sensitive. Loud, obviously when you're actually in combat, um, things can get a bit noisy, and um, certainly uh, any of the veterans that are, are watching this will know exactly what I mean by a bit noisy. Um, shall we say extremely noisy? <laughs> Not only do you get the whiner bullets, but you get the bangs from the mortars, and the, yeah, no, we won't go into that bit. Noise on is basically a squelch defeat so that you can test your battery, and this set has actually sat in my cupboard now for just over a year with no charging of the battery. So I'm going to do uh, the unthinkable here and I'm going to da -da 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 remember how to work it. This is the on off switch. This is the whisper mode. It always starts in whisper so that you don't automatically get a burst of static to give away your position. Then goes to your loud and then goes to your noise position. And let's just uh, probably not enough charge in the battery. Although, let's just have a look at the turf meter. Uh, no, probably not enough charge in the battery. But uh, yeah, so that is the uh, that is the unit. That is the. British Army's Klansman PRC351. You can't just call it a Klansman because the Klansman was a whole range of radios. I used to have the HF version um, until somebody broke into my car and stole it. Um, they took quite a bit of stuff that time. Um, they took another one of these as well because um, I used to have a matching pair. Uh, and the HF radio. And all of the accessories, um, certainly batteries, chargers, apply to the HF set as well as the VHF set. Um, you know, they're common across the range and that's, again, army mentality. Let's, um, let's standardise so that uh, nothing can go wrong. Um, use the same batteries for everything, use the same uh, connectors for everything, use the same plugs, cables, antennas, it all works. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you find this show and tell a little bit interesting. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.